What's up everyone, welcome back to Mad Medicine. Uh, I haven't posted a video in a very long time and I am so sorry for that. I've been trying to do a lot of stuff but medical school has really been kicking my ass recently. The third year is a tough year. I did not expect that. So it definitely has been a very stressful time but today in this video we're gonna be talking about the top five myths about medical school, the top five medical school myths, however you wanna say it, whatever. Anyways, a lot of you guys, a lot of undergrads and pre-med students who I work with have been talking to me about what medical school really is like. So I was like, you know what? Why don't we do a top five medical school myths video? And that's why we're doing it. Let's uh, also, stay tuned to the very end of the video because I'm gonna be giving you guys a bonus myth about medical school that you guys might not have considered. So stay tuned until then. And we're also gonna be talking about where the channel is going because I have some really exciting stuff that I'm pretty sure you guys will want to hear because it pertains to y'all, okay? So, before we talk about any of that, let's talk about the top five myths about medical school, yo! All right, so let's get started by talking about number five. Myth number five is that you will have no free time. You will have no free time in medical school. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a myth. I'm gonna give you guys a few anecdotes. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of information about why that's a myth, because you will have some free time. Granted, it will not be the same amount of free time you guys have in undergrad, but medical school is not all work, 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 and work, 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 okay? Yes, it is a lot of work. It definitely is stressful at times. It definitely is very time-consuming work also, but there are times where you will have some free time that you can spend with your family and friends. Case in point, every year uh, during winter break I get a chunk of time off okay and during that chunk of time during my winter break my wife and I like to travel I like to spend time with her and with my friends instead of studying yes I could be studying but in fact I have this time off I want to enjoy it I want to spend some time to decompress before medical school starts all over again Okay, so that is definitely a myth and I really want to say that essentially medical school also comes down to just good time management. If you have good time management skills, if you guys are able to manage your workload along with you know your play load, you know the amount of stuff you're going to play uh, and enjoy with, you'll be fine. Yes, you will miss out on some things no matter what. You might not be able to hang out with your family and friends for every occasion that you want to. You're gonna have to make those sacrifices and you know that. But it doesn't mean that you're never gonna see them and you're only gonna be working. That's not the case at all, guys. It's not the case, okay? So that myth is just that, it's a myth. You do have free time in medical school. You do have time to enjoy your friends and your family and your you know significant others as well. So that is myth number five. And uh, that is the first myth we're gonna go through. Let's go through the next myth. Myth number four is that the content in medical school, all the content in medical school is hard. And no, not all the content in medical school is hard. That's the part of the myth that's wrong, okay? All the content in medical school is not hard. There are stuff that you're gonna see that's just a review of simple biology and biochemistry that you learned in undergrad. That comes up again, surprise, surprise. Does organic chemistry come up? No, it's not gonna come up ever again. It's a waste of a subject. I don't know why we have to take it, but it's stupid. Uh, not all the content in medical school is hard. In fact, a lot of the content is pretty straightforward. It's very intuitive. And if you just think about what's happening in a very direct manner, in a very linear, straightforward manner, you'll understand the pathways and physiology that's happening along with the pathology, the negative things that happen in our body that shouldn't be happening. It's very straightforward. But there are things that are very confusing. There are things that are very convoluted. Biochemistry, for one example, for me, it's super duper hard because I don't like biochemistry. I'm not a fan of biochemistry. I hate those pathways. So for me, it's really difficult because I hate learning it. I have no interest in learning biochemistry. Jesus. Okay, uh, not all the content is hard. Some of the content is definitely hard, but there's just so much content. That's the part about medical school that's hard. Someone once told me that medical school is like drinking out of a fire hydrant, okay? There's so much material being thrown at you that, and you have to absorb all that material and learn all that material. 
that it's nearly impossible. And it is impossible because no one can learn everything in that short amount of time. It takes years to learn all that material. Those doctors you're working with that you are gonna work with spent years learning all the things they know. Okay, so you're not gonna pick it up right then and there. You're just being exposed to everything all at once and you're just expected to know bits and pieces of everything all at once. That's why medical school is hard. Not because the content is hard, just because there's such a vast amount of things you need to know. Okay, so that is myth number four. We are done with the fourth myth now. Myth number three is also something I heard a lot when I was an undergrad. A lot of times I heard it from uh, upperclassmen, people who were a little bit higher up the chain than me in, uh, in school. And that was that all the doctors that you work with in medical school are gonna pimp the sh out of you. And uh, bef before we move forward, let me explain what pimping means. Uh, it's not the street term we're talking about. It's actually a uh, semi-educational term. Essentially, in the old days, the doctors would uh, quiz you, would test you on the spot and see, hey, what do you know? Do you know this pathway? Do you know what this drug does? Do you know the mechanism of this drug? Do you know the pathology, the physiology of cancer, etc., etc.? They would pimp you on the spot and you were expected to regurgitate all the knowledge you have in your mind about that material. And if you got it wrong, they'd make you feel like crap. Okay, that's pretty much what pimping is. Pimping stands for put in my place, okay? Um, so when I was an undergrad, when I was in pre-med, I heard a lot of people saying that doctors like to pimp medical students hard. They like to test you on the spot, son. They will, they'll ask you, tell me the pathway uh, for this you know, X, Y, and Z. And if you don't know it, you're dumb, you're stupid. You, how are you gonna become a physician? You're not capable. What's wrong with you? Why are you going to blah, 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 stuff like that. Uh, and I wanna tell you guys that's completely not true. A lot of the doctors who I've worked with, majority of the doctors who I've worked with actually, are so nice, are so helpful, they take care of their students, they take care of you guys mentally and physically, they'll make sure you guys understand what's happening, they'll let you guys practice so you can learn from practical skills and practical experiences rather than just textbook knowledge, so that's very important. And overall, in general, they're just very good people. There are some physicians out there who will pimp you, who love pimping you, and uh, I'm sorry if you get exposed to that. I'm sorry, it sucks, it'll happen. At one point in your career, you will run into that physician who everyone knows has a reputation for pimping their students, and that just sucks. It's just, you know, it is what it is. It'd be like that sometimes. But overall, the physicians you interact with are not trying to pimp you to put you down. They're trying to remind you, guess what? You don't know what you don't know. You, as a medical student, could be thinking, yo, I got placenta previa on lockdown, son. I know this, I got it down. Come at me, test me, I got you, bro. And then the doc's gonna be like, okay, tell me what drugs you use to treat XYZ well, that's related to blah, blah, blah. And you're gonna be like, yo, did not expect that because I'm a medical student and I don't have that experience yet. Okay, that's why pimping is so important because it lets you know you still have a long ways to go in order to become the physician you wanna be, that you need to be in order to take care of your patients, excuse me. So it's a good thing, it's a good tool if used properly and most physicians, if not all, use it properly okay so just be uh, uh, aware of that be rest assured that's a myth not all doctors are there are super mean to the medical students in fact majority of them are super nice to take care of the students and they provide very good learning experiences so that is myth number three guys we are practically done we got two more to go and myth number two we're just gonna dive right into it is that all you have to do in medical school is pass you may have heard the saying C's get degrees or C's make you uh, C's make MDs etc stuff like that it's true all you do have to do is pass but realistically in order to treat someone to know how to treat someone properly you cannot just get a C you need to know the material in depth you need to have a good understanding because to treat someone you need to know what's going on and everything that's associated with a certain illness in order to do the due diligence that that person deserves. So, definitely not true. All you have to do is pass is not something that you should be thinking about, it's not something you should be considering because it's a bad mentality, guys. Have I done this? Of course I have. There have been times where I'm taking an exam and I'm like, yo, I just hope I pass. I don't care if I get a 90%. I'm just trying to pass. I'm just trying to move forward. 
it does happen and it will happen to you because medical school is challenging uh, in many ways but definitely do not aim to just pass aim to do better than passing so that worst case you drop a little and you'll still pass okay very important very very important now the last myth the last myth ah oh man this is something even I'm guilty of perpetrating or perpetuating I don't know I'm guilty of spreading this myth too uh, and the last myth is that medical school is easy it is not easy guys medical school oh my god is not easy I'm in my third year of medical school and I'm getting whooped okay I'm getting destroyed out here it sucks Medical school is not at all easy. If you guys go to one of my previous vlogs, I think it was my first one maybe, I think I said in there, medical school is not that hard. Medical school is not that hard. Oh my god, all you gotta do is study. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, uh, look at me, I'm foreign. I'm so smart. Uh. No, I, like, if I could go back, I would slap myself straight across the face and be like, yo, you are an idiot, son. What are you thinking? So, medical school is not easy. That's the simple truth. Medical school is meant to challenge you. It is challenging in many ways. It's mentally challenging, it's physically challenging, and it's emotionally challenging, mentally challenging, because this is gonna challenge you. This content, like I said, it might not be hard, but there's so much content that in order for you to learn it and memorize it and master it, it's difficult. You have to practice, practice, practice. You have to study, 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 and you need to make sure that the things you are weak on, you improve on. That is hard, that is mentally challenging. That will really push you to a limit. So that's the first part. It's also physically challenging because you're gonna have to get up really early some days and some nights you will not get any sleep. Like take it from me guys, last month I was sleeping a total of three to five hours a night. If I was lucky, it was five. Mostly three to four hours a night. You can ask my wife this, I look horrible. I still have bags under my eyes. Like, my God, you may not be able to see this because I got a light up there, but if you guys go to the beginning of this video, I got bags under my eyes, son. It's hard, it's physically taxing, and, I, and I've, I've aged, let me tell you how much I've aged in medical school. When I got started with medical school, my beard was all white. I have a white, sorry, was all black. Ooh, that's, that's, that's bad. No, my beard was all black when I started medical school. I have a white hair somewhere down there. It's a white hair in my beard. Oh my God, it has started, guys. Medical school has made it happen. So, it's definitely not easy by any means. Medical school is meant to challenge you physically as well. And then emotionally, it's very taxing because you may not be able to see your friends, your loved ones, you may just be working, taking care of patients, and that's great and all, but when you're working late nights, you're working long nights, you have no time to do anything else, no time to take care of yourself, it does become uh, emotionally taxing so it's not easy whatsoever if you guys watched that first like vlog and thought I knew I knew what I was talking about I had no idea guys I had no clue so just just, just ignore that vlog completely from now on <laughs> so those are the top five myths about medical school I hope you guys enjoyed them I hope they were informative first of all and I hope that they were helpful for you guys to know now I want to tell you guys a little bit about where this channel is going because it really impacts you guys and there's some stuff that you guys might want to know the other day I was thinking about where I want to take the channel what I want to do with it and I created this channel because I wanted to help you guys I wanted to give you guys the tools to succeed to get into medical school or whatever uh, uh, profession you want to go into in medicine I wanted to give you guys those tools and the thing is uh, the other day I was thinking you know what I want to create some educational videos so I started creating these videos for the USMLE step one which is like an exam you take at the end of your second year it's like the MCAT but for medical students really important blah 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 anyways I started making these these videos teaching the uh, teaching for the USMLE step one so if you guys are medical students or if you guys are uh, uh, going into medical school, go ahead and watch those videos. We've been releasing them every single day for the past month and a half now. And uh, we're going to continue that as much as we can. That's going to happen. But I also realized that not all you guys are medical students or even close to getting into medical school. Some of you guys, probably the majority of you guys, are uh, pre-med students and you know exactly where I'm going. Ladies and gentlemen, we have started working on a complete, a comprehensive set of videos for the MCAT. Yes, a complete comprehensive set of videos for the MCAT. 
I'm gonna make those videos some slide decks for you guys so you guys can watch them you guys can study for the MCAT with them and I'm gonna keep it to the point straight direct things you need to know we're gonna cut out all the BS that you guys see in the books we're gonna keep it simple we're also gonna do questions uh, for each video almost each video so it can help you guys think how you need to for the MCAT that's my goal so we're starting off with bio we're gonna do biochemistry then chemistry organic chemistry physics and I'm gonna figure out how to teach cars uh, in the meantime because that is the toughest uh, way to teach and that's a, sorry that's the toughest subject to teach and the, the toughest subject to master for the MCAT so from now on, we're gonna be releasing regular videos, regular teaching videos every single day, whether it's a USMLE Step 1 video or an MCAT video, I have not decided yet. I'm still working on that, but you're gonna see regular content from this channel every single day. And at the same time, every Wednesday, the goal, the goal is every Wednesday. Sometimes it might not happen, so don't hold me to it, don't get upset. But every Wednesday, I'm still gonna be releasing these informative videos for you guys, this informative content, so it can help you guys uh, as an undergrad, so you guys can get a little bit more tidbit, not just educational knowledge that I'm giving you, some practical life skills, and just some practical knowledge for uh, pre-meds out there okay so that's what we're gonna do from now on every single single week we're gonna have a brand new video that's the goal uh don't hold me do it because i get busy Ooh. and then you know every day those educational videos so thank you so much for all you guys who are new to the channel who are supporting this channel i really appreciate it your guys support means a lot to me it really means a lot to me thank you so much for watching this video if this video helped you in any way if you guys like this content if you guys want to see more go ahead like comment in the video and subscribe to the channel please subscribe to the channel it'll really help us out and with that being said i'll see you guys here real soon take it easy guys ah psych you thought we were done no we still got the bonus myth about medical school to go so let's talk about the bonus myth about medical school and that is that the only thing that matters in medical school are your board examinations the tests that you have to take to get certified to be a physician in medical school okay and those are the USMLE step one or the complex essentially the exactly the same exam uh, just different for the MD or DO students out there and what uh, what they test are uh, your knowledge for the first two years of medical school and a lot of residency programs use those exam scores as a way to determine whether or not you'll get uh, into their program now does is that the only thing that matters in medical school this is the only thing matter uh, is the only thing that matters a test score no and a lot of people will tell you yes it really does matter and of course it matters to a certain extent because a lot of programs use the step one or complex scores as a way to weed out uh, uh, certain applicants and to then, then decide who are we going to give interviews to. I think uh, in addition to those scores, of course they matter, but what really matters at the end of the day are three things. Number one is your personality. Your personality makes a huge difference because of the fact that if you're a good person, if you're a person who you can work with, other people can work with, who you make other people's day better, uh, both the patient and your colleagues, it makes a huge difference. Because I could be having a bad day, but if I see you and you make me feel better, that makes me uh, so happy in general, but also makes me happy to work with you. And that makes a huge difference in the workplace, especially in medicine, a career that is very taxing to a lot of different people across the board. Number two, your work ethic. Your work ethic is so important because you may not be the smartest person and often you will not be the smartest person in the room. But if you are hardworking, if you are able to put in the work that needs to be put in to take care of the stuff that needs to be taken care of, I guarantee you people are going to want you over the next person who's just smart but lazy because at the end of the day, things need to get done and you are going to be able to do them. And at the same time, the stuff that you don't know, the content you don't know, you're able to go out and learn it and improve your knowledge base because you are hardworking and essentially that makes you such an asset for people for programs and for hospitals to have okay that's so important so that's the second thing is your work ethic and then finally is your outlook if your outlook is very good if you realize that yes you may have a bad day but the rest of your day is going to be good it also makes a huge difference for you because that means that you can isolate the negative things that happen at work away from all the rest of your day so when you go home when you see your friends and family members you are still able to enjoy your time with them and have a good time i think those two things are the most important thing along with your grades of course uh together 
that is what determines whether or not you're going to be a good physician. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked this content and I hope you guys subscribe to our channel so you guys can see more. So don't forget to hit the subscribe uh, button in the bottom. Hit the bell notification if you guys want to. And I'll see you guys back here real soon. Take it easy, guys. Thank you.